One second, guys. One second. H2O. How's it going, runners? My name is Justin Thompson. I am your average running PT, and I help the average runner achieve their own personal elite status. If that's something that you guys are into, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you guys know when the next video comes out. That's right. Today, we are talking about hydration. Now, just how important is hydration to the average runner and helping you achieve your own personal elite status? Well, here's what I'm figuring out. Uh, whenever I was younger, I really didn't pay real close attention to my hydration, and I'm starting to realize just how much that probably was to my detriment. And right now, I notice when I don't drink water and I don't stay hydrated that things just don't go according to plan. And when I do, then things just feel much easier. And all of my... Sorry, there's a cat. And all of my joints, my muscles, my tendons, my tissues all throughout my body, they just feel better whenever I stay hydrated. Not to mention I don't go snacking around all the time whenever I get hungry when really I'm just thirsty all the time. So here's what I'm noticing whenever I am staying really well hydrated. Whenever I'm trying to do this math type of training, if I'm not hydrated, my heart rate shoots through the roof really, really quickly. I hit that one and a half to two mile mark, and then suddenly cardiac drifts just starts to take over, and my heart rate just cannot stay under control unless I bring my pace way back down into the 10 and a half, 11 minute range, which is not what I want to be doing. I want to be running in the 10 minutes and below range, at least right now. In the future, I want to be running closer in the, to the nine minute range, and I'm not going to get there if I'm completely dehydrated all of the time. The truth is, my blood volume needs to stay at a certain level so that the heart can pump the most efficiently. And whenever my, whenever I'm dehydrated, that, that blood volume starts to go down. Now, cardiac drift is another thing that I want to talk about in the future, and I think I might make another video on that here very, very soon. Let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in, that cardiac drift or cardiovascular drift, where the heart rate just kind of goes up even though your effort is staying the same. So let me know if that's something y'all are interested in. But for right now, I just want to stick with hydration and what is enough in terms of hydration. And obviously, this is going to be completely different for everybody. It's going to be different based on your your body weight, your sweat rate, your metabolism, all of these kinds of things. But here's what I'm noticing as a general rule of thumb, is that I want to stay ahead of my body's drive for thirst. So what does that mean? So obviously, if we don't drink water for a while, we are going to start to get thirsty. And what I want to do in order to combat that is to start drinking water even before you start getting thirsty. So first thing in the morning, I will drink a glass of water. Whenever I get up in the morning, I have zero desire to drink a glass of water because I want something to eat more so than something to drink. And putting that water into my stomach early in the morning is not enjoyable to me. I want something that's got some taste to it, some texture to it, not just something that's going to go down and then start sloshing around in my belly. So I don't want to drink first thing in the morning, but what I'm noticing is if I do that and then 30 minutes later I go for my run, that run is way better than if I just wake up, go straight out the door without drinking any water at all. Now obviously this gets into whether you eat or not before going for your morning run. I choose not to, at least if I'm doing an easy math style run. 
if I'm doing more of a speed workout or something like that, I will choose to eat something just to have a little bit of extra energy. But that's something that's for a different video. And let me know if y'all want me to talk about, you know, whether to eat before a run or not. Now that same rule of thumb applies throughout the rest of the day. So when I'm done with that run, I immediately go get a glass of water. I'm thirsty at that point, so I'm ready and willing to drink then. But I could then go the whole day without really wanting to drink any more water. And that's not good. You want to stay ahead of your drive for thirst. So you don't wait until you get thirsty again to start drinking water. So what I would do is try and set some sort of kind of schedule to make sure that you're drinking enough throughout the day. Now, I'm terrible at this, so I really need to start to uh, implement this in my own life as well. What I have noticed is that when I have done this in the past, I have felt way better throughout the course of the day. I've snacked less as well. If this is something that you know you want to implement in, t in order to help with weight loss or things like that, and you want to prevent snacking, this is a great way to do it, making sure that you're staying ahead of your hydration so that you don't have that drive for hunger as well as that drive for thirst as well. Now I have heard of some rules that you can start to follow that I think are good general rules that you can use to make sure that you're drinking enough and that is take the your body weight in pounds and drink half that number of ounces. Now. I apologize, I don't know how to convert those things to the metric system. I will try and do my best to do that and stick it somewhere in here for you guys. Um, I know that I've had some people reaching out from not in the US and they, <laughs> they want me to put things into the metric system. That blows my mind to try and do right here on camera, so I'll try and figure that out for you guys and stick that right in here somewhere. So I do think that that is a good general rule to try and take that half your body weight in pounds and put it into ounces of water. Now what's better? Gatorade or water or things of that sort? In general, it's better to do water. Obviously when you get to a point where you're really dehydrated or you're in the middle of a run or you're needing to replenish electrolytes or sugar or things of that sort in order to keep your blood glucose level up or make sure that you're not being depleted of all of your electrolytes, then you want to start to supplement water with something extra, whether that's some sort of electrolyte mix or something that's got some sort of carb in it. But for the most part, with general hydration, you want to be drinking water. Um, but again, whenever it's time to replenish things, you want to make sure that you're not ending up with something like hyponatremia, where your salt levels get depleted, your, your electrolytes get depleted, and all that kind of thing. So you want to make sure that everything like that kind of stays in balance. But in general, throughout the course of your day, that stuff is going to come from your food, and your, your hydration is going to come from just drinking water. So I know that this was not a super scientific video, but I just wanted to show you guys the importance of drinking water, especially right now during these hot summer months. I woke up this morning and I ran and it was 97% humidity, 75 degrees, which is nasty at 6 a.m. Um, and then it just gets worse throughout the day. So um, it's really, really important to make sure that you're keeping hydrated because when it's getting hot and sticky and humid and all of this kind of stuff, you got to really make sure that you are able to, to maintain that blood volume so that your heart can pump as efficiently as possible while you're out there on your runs. So that's it for today, guys. Go out there, seek your elite, and I will see you guys next time.